Hello everyone, Noob Knife here with a review on A Total War Saga Troy. I was kindly given early access by Creative Assembly so I could play it a couple of days early and get my bearings around the game. Total War Troy is the second saga game they've made, first one being Thrones of Britannia. Thrones of Britannia was riddled with issues on release but the question is, is Troy in the similar situation? Let's find out. The first thing you'll need to decide is on your character. Each character has its own story behind them, to which the game has tried to play around. Generally speaking, I've had no issues with the character abilities, however, there are some abilities that I do not like. Paris, for example, is shackled to his love for Helen. Of course, this suits Paris and his situation, but what it does is force you to move Helen around constantly while you expand and protect her. It's incredibly tedious, and in my opinion, even if the idea behind it is sound, I just don't like it. Each character has a multitude of unique units, unlike in Three Kingdoms. Anais has his Dardanian units as well as different starting units from Troy. Sarpedon is similar as he has the Lycian units as, and Troy has Trojan units. Achilles has the most unique units as he can recruit units from his starting position, Phythians, his own Myrmidons, Aeginians and Thessalians. If you want a ton of variety, Achilles might be the one for you. Overall, I think most of the character abilities and uniques are decently made, some being better than others as you would expect. Diving on into the campaign for the first time, you might be surprised at how big the campaign map is. It spans from the shores of Greece to the Anatolian coast. The campaign map is much bigger than I expected. Not only is it big, it's also beautiful. While I was playing Troy, I couldn't get over how beautiful it was. But the best part of the campaign is the new resource management. Troy does its resources differently to its predecessors. You'll discover you discover you'll have five different resources to play around with. First one is food. Food is used to recruit your troops and pay for their upkeep. It's the most important resource for an aggressive player. If you want multiple armies, you'll need a lot of food. With the supply system in effect, when you'll have more than one army on the field, it can be very expensive indeed. Next resource we have wood. Wood is used for building up your settlements. Every building in the game requires some amount of wood. So you'll need to make sure you increase your output if you want to build up your newly conquered settlements fast. Then we have stone. Not only do buildings require wood to be constructed, some buildings also require stone. Stone is very important for upgrading your settlement's main city building. Without stone you'll not be able to upgrade your cities and unlock new building slots. Stone is less common than the previous resources. Now we're coming to the more important late game resources, bronze and gold. Bronze is used to recruit the more advanced units in your roster as well as some select buildings. If you want a better army, you'll need bronze to resupply the weaponry and armor for the men. Similar to stone, bronze is much less common than the others. You'll have to search the map for the resources you need. Gold is not like previous titles. It's not as abundant and not as used. You'll find that gold is a rare site on the campaign but need for your special buildings and some very late tier units. If you want the best army that you can field, you'll have to search high and low for that gold or research the uh, royal decrees. Each resource can be found on the map in each of the non-province capital segments, to which you then can proceed to build five different buildings that provide different amounts of said resource and mine negative effects. Overall I find the resource management a huge step up from the previous Total War titles and I urge this kind of improvement to be passed on to future titles. So I've already spoken a bit about the buildings in this video already, but let's take a look at the rest of them. The buildings of Troy are varied yet very samey. You have five different types. Ports in Troy provide you with food, growth and an increase in resources and unit recruitment. But without naval combat in the game, it just does not stand out from any other resource building. It's just modifiers. Ports lose a lot of relevance with the lack of ships in the game. Next up is military. I can't really critique the military buildings too much as you gotta expect that all military buildings do is, well, allow you to recruit units or build up your garrison. There are one or two buildings that buff your units that are recruited in that region but it still feels like taking a step back from titles like Shogun 2 and Three Kingdoms where the build management was much more lively and not all about just building a building for a new unit type. On to admin and temples. Admin builds are the builds you need to buff your economy, increase your growth or keep your people happy. They can only be built in the capital city of the region and honestly are fairly boring how they work. You want to increase your growth? Just build houses. Want more resources? Build a warehouse. Similar things happen with the temple, which you build a temple to a guard and get favourite and buffs. Though that being said, I think the temples are my favourite part about the buildings, allowing you to specialise your buffs on a select unit rather than buffing your entire power base. In the end, the game is on the Warhammer framework, I do believe. 
and it's very obvious in the builds as it's very similar to Warhammer 2. I enjoyed Warhammer 2, but I personally felt the builds on that way was very samey. Now we're going to take a quick look on how influence works. Influence is very much like culture from previous titles. Though in Troy, when you hit 6% influence, you gain a buff to your resource builds for high influence. Now, I like this mechanic as I feel like it does add more of a focus to getting that influence up, but I feel like it's lacking negatives. At least from my time, I never needed to worry about low influence. There was no happiness debuffs, no growth reduction, nothing. I feel like it's a good idea with missed opportunities to add to the management. Overall, the campaign has had huge improvements, most for the better, with one thing to note is that there will be no multiplayer on Troy release, which is quite sad to hear to be honest because I love co op in a campaign with friends. Now the, the, the multiplayer battles itself I don't mind too much because I never really played them anyway, but it still sucks to hear that it won't be in the game for 3 months. Time to talk about one of the big parts about Total War, the battles. There are a few things to mention about the battles, firstly the maps are gorgeous. Siege and land maps I absolutely adore in this game. Land maps are diverse, siege maps are tiered. So much potential for choke point battles and last stand sieges, it truly is nice to see coming into the battle. Secondly, the generals. The generals are not overpowered from my experience. Range through heavy damage to them and of course you can duel each other. The early game units do tend to struggle a bit versus the generals, but you should expect that. But using the later tier units I found that generally they can hold their own and actually start beating the enemy general. Though not all things about the battles I enjoy, one thing there won't be blood on release so you won't see any executions, no blood or gore which doesn't help bring the battles to life. It makes them feel weird, just men flying back after being poked without any blood just, just doesn't help with immersion. On top of this, when units charge into each other I don't feel like there's a big impact, they kind of just walk into each other. When I am in a battle I want to hear the units crash together, I want to hit, be immersed in the battle, I want to feel like the units have power. I don't get that feeling in this game. Though it should be noted that I have heard that there is a bug with collision in this game, so that should be taken into account. Last thing to note on the battles are the battle terrains and troop behind the myth. Total War Troy adds more depth onto the battles by implementing things like mud and long grass. Generally in my time I didn't really feel like I got them that much and when I did, they didn't impact my battle. But it's a nice feature added to them and if you can get them working I'm sure it can help you win a battle. As well as new terrain, they've added what they call Truth Behind the Myth, an idea that in theory sounds cool to me. In practice, while the units do look cool, they don't feel special. Harpies are just female javelin throwers, centaurs are cavalry, giants are just slightly taller men and so on. They look cool as I said, but there is more creative freedom with mythical units than a more grounded approach, so maybe that was the better option to make. A couple of things to mention before I wrap up this video, yes quick deal is a thing on the game which is great. Also, Divine Will. Divine Will is a cool mechanic where you pray to a god and get buffs to your units and campaign buffs based on whom you pray to. Over time it will drop if you don't continue to pray, which is great. It means that you have to spend resources for the buffs and keep at it or lose your buffs. Lastly, Royal Decrees. Royal Decrees are the research in the game. Each one provides different buffs, be it resource gain, unit buffs, recruitment costs and more. The thing I like about Royal Decrees is each section is good for different generals. I'm sure late game you can have them all, but early game you'll want to prioritise what you need, rather than have them at all. For example, Anias uses a lot of light infantry. Going down the Royal Granary section you'll get buffs to the light infantry and growth. A lot more beneficial to Anias than, let's say Achilles, who uses more medium units. All in all, Total War Troy is a fun game that misses out on some opportunities and lacks as impactful battles as I would have liked. Would I recommend this game? If you prefer a focus on the campaign and don't mind a bit more arcadey battle experience, then yes, I highly recommend it. If you're more into the battles and feeling immersed, then no, this title is probably not for you in its current state. Will I continue to play after launch? Yes, yes I will. I enjoy this game a lot and I hope they improve on the game in the future. Thanks for watching this review on A Total War Saga Troy. If you like the content I provide, like and subscribe and comment below if you plan on picking up Troy when it releases on the 13th and who are you going to play playing first?